An ICRPG campaign. The Forgotten. The party has spent some time in the north, where the great barbarian tribes are said to roam. However, the populace was not friendly, and it appeared a somber aura had pervaded everybody you met in every village you encountered. Summer ended early, and a cold and chilly wind descended on the group. So wanting to make haste for a warmer weather in a more populated region, the party has begun a day's long journey to the south. Well, welcome everyone to um, a little adventure that I like to call The Forgotten. We have with us our Ultimate Effort podcast. Uh, so I'm Alex, as you know. And of course, um, we have Mike, Matthew, Matt, and John. Uh, who will be our intrepid adventurers this evening. And so um, I'm going to get started with um, uh, kind of setting the scene and a little bit of a, an introduction uh, of the adventure. And then I'm going to turn it over to these guys and uh, let them introduce their characters. So without further ado, The Forgotten. So guys, having spent weeks in the um, Northlands, summer has ended and the air has turned uh, very chill. Uh, the days have grown short and darkness uh, comes earlier and earlier. So with winter fast approaching, uh, winter is coming, as they say, um, you have begun to journey south uh, in search of better weather. So what you need to know is that the air is cold. Uh, you can see your breath a little bit. Uh, you've journeyed all day. It's towards the evening. Uh, the ground is hard with a bit of a crunchy permafrost, and even though the leaves are still on the trees, uh, they're still green, it won't be long before uh, they begin to turn very rapidly. Um, you have traveled most of the day uh, in silence, uh, eager to make uh, good time, and uh, I think it's a case that uh, none of you slept particularly well uh, the night before this long uh, trek. The, fi the forest is quiet except for the creaking of branches and the usual wildlife uh, that you might occasionally overhear. Um, so for this first turn, uh, we're not going to do any movement or take any actions, but I'm going to have you guys do an introductory round to introduce each one of your characters uh, because uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, uh, not certain that uh, even you guys know each other uh, that well yet. So, uh, I think first up is Matt. Okay, uh, my character is uh, Rosar of Clan Uruk. He is a Torton. Um, he's an ancient Torton druid from the First Age who um, went into um, a state of magical hibernation and to to return to the world when, when the druids were needed again, when, when the balance was was shifted towards darkness and he is uh he's recently been awoken he's not sure exactly why um he hasn't been awake for very long all that he has to his name is his staff his robe and um his his powers have only begun to return to him and he's looking for a purpose in this new strange new world so uh next up is uh john so uh, John, I'll be uh, playing the character of Galt, who is uh, the, the ageless uh, immortal commander of the Anvil Knights in Duros 10. Um, he uh, achieved this strange uh, uh, magical phenomenon about him uh, whilst on a quest for the king. And, uh, uh, you know, he's just been uh, in his service and you know, just going on quests and whatnot. So he's, you know, he, he was asked by the king to be a part of this group. He doesn't really know why. The king is a far wiser man than he. So next up, um, we have uh, Matthew. All right. So uh, my character is uh, Edmund Redpath. Um, so basically, he went on to study archaeology. But uh, after a few years on the field and realizing how boring it is to dig up old skulls and like just be in the library all days, 
he figured out that well maybe there's more to it and became kind of an adventurer in this quest to like find forgotten artifacts but also to have more thrill in his life so he basically tried to found tried to find a, an adventuring party where he could like venture deeply into those forgotten places that like no one dares to venture and maybe uh, make a name for himself as an archaeologist and uh next up is mike yeah, so uh, my character is called uh, Gordon Rambo. Um, he was born and raised in a blacksmithing family, um, but was kicked out when he was 18 years old when he tried to cook food in uh, the smithing uh, furnace. <laughs> um, so he kind of lived in a uh, in, yeah, he kind of lived in the wilderness, and uh, he met a strange. Uh, druid who cooked him one of his the best meals in his life uh, and the next day he disappeared and he's been searching for for this recipe um, he met the rest of the characters um, by pure coincidence um, they were well most of them were starving in the wilderness and he just decided to cook for them and everybody enjoyed his cooking so they just kind of st stuck together so <laughs> as you guys are um as you guys are walking along uh the forest road um you hear uh of course it's silent um but you hear this piercing wolf howl break the silence and certainly you've heard wolves before um in the wilderness but this one is clearly on the hunt it's out for blood and um it, it is a shriek contrast to the silence of the forest and as you're coming down this little pathway here the first thing that you see is um an individual who's running he's panting uh and when he sees you he starts screaming help me oh my god help me help me help me as he makes his way down the path and very shortly thereafter following him you see the biggest wolf you have ever seen it is monstrous of a wolf. And as this individual attempts to make his way further down the path, you notice that the wolf catches up to him and begins to, uh, and, and pounces, knocking oh, him no. to the ground. And he's screaming, oh my God. And he's trying to fight. And all you hear are ripping and snarling and his screaming. And the wolf does something uh, that I call sort of the death shake. I don't know if you've ever seen a dog kind of yeah. sh shake a yeah. chew toy. But oh, it, after pouncing on this guy, it literally grabs him and shakes him around like a rag doll. Oh, wonderful. No, why? <laughs> and then proceeds to slowly kind of drag him down that little path. To you, it looks like a little indent in the road or a little clearing. And at that point, the wolf's howl and the frenzy of its snarling is echoed and joined by the howl of two more wolves who appear on either side of the road and who trot out in your direction snarling and teeth bearing and their hackles raised <laughs> <laughs> and so with that uh rosar you're up rosar is um he's uh he he's he's lived his life one with nature and he 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 recognizes something aberrant about these wolves so he's going to step forth and um use his wisdom spell elemental air and he's going to say be gone with your stain and just just kind of like um a conjure a, a blast a gust of wind to uh, to knock them back amidst the trees oh excellent cool. and by the way rosar as you begin this um, particularly as you recognize that these are aberrant, uh, the red crystal at the top of your staff begins glowing a bright, bright red, um, right. covering the entire party in sort of this reddish hue. Yeah. Um, All right. Um, I, I rolled a, uh, I got a 16. Oh, absolutely. So uh, you, you easily conjure this air blast out of the air. Cool. And um, it, it looks a little bit like this. And it just <laughs> flies from your fingertips and literally smashes through these two wolves 
and they're mm-hmm. they're they are definitely dashed back in into the trees. And uh, go ahead and roll your magic damage. On Sweet the- deal. Oh, oh, maximum damage eleven. Oh, well, they <sighs> they are instantly killed <laughs> as they are oh. as, their, as their bodies. <laughs> As, as, as their bodies are smashed against these uh, against the tree trunks and some of these broken branches, um, they're, they're just twisted and mangled and barely have time to let out a yelp as they're flattened by your magic. Yes. Nice. Galt, you're up. So Galt sees this and inspired by this just amazing, you know, feat of, of magic before him. You know, he... You know, he turns to his friends like, Ugh, such magnificence. It reminds me of a song as he pulls out his lute and he's like, <laughs> as soon as I can remember how that goes. So you, you easily, you easily learn the song. And as you do, uh, this, this song that was called the Sanctuary Score, um, instantly uh comes alive for you at your fingertips and the song number one demands to know who will receive its benefit yeah so rosar rosar everything snaps into place and rosar instantly starts glowing with a bright white light and rosar you now have 10 temporary hit points yeah Awesome. awesome Okay, and uh, that takes us to Edmund. Uh, okay, so God damn it! Every goddamn time I'm walking. Through the forest. Okay, <laughs> I've I've got that guy. I've got it. So I'm gonna dash through the forest to like get a shortcut. Okay, yeah, are you heading this direction? Yeah, yeah. I want to cut like instead of going on the trail, I'm gonna go through the wood. Yeah. Yep. So you you making the yeah, can I uh, can I sneak there? Yeah, yeah. To try to hide there. Yeah. I'm Once you arrive. Hide. Yeah, go for it. So, with Dex, right? Correct. Yep. That's it. Nah, mod twenty. Well, I almost said map, but you know, I was just uh, showing off. Oh yeah, <laughs> your your character is so nimble and graceful, and uh, <laughs> of course it's the, the shadows. Dang. Look at them branches. Oh, oh yeah, I have to sneak. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> the shadows are deeper in the tree since it's approaching evening, so you easily have no trouble hiding. And uh, if that uh, is good for you, well, do I see uh, the creature, the wolf? Oh yes. So you you definitely see them down here struggling. Um, y- you you potentially never lost sight of them. Okay. Oh, yeah. So they, they they are in your field of vision. Yeah. And that brings us up to Gordon. Yes. Um, I'm going to do a uh, short movement uh, on the path. And I'm going to take my cleaver and I'm going to sh- launch it towards the wolf. Say hello yeah. to my little friend. <laughs> that's um, probably because at that point, and again, they're a little bit dead off the path. That's probably going to be a hard, a hard throw. Uh, that's okay. I got He's pretty big, but that's probably going to be a hard throw. <laughs> so that was pretty close. Your um, your cleaver uh, flies through the air, but somewhere it gets hung up in the branches of this tree and um, clatters and clangs to the road. So it's going to be about here for you to retrieve. Cool. It is uh, my turn. And so what, what you guys can make out, and Edmund, what you particularly see is... This guy seems to have lost consciousness um, from being shaken around, and so the uh, the wolf continues to drag him. Oh no! Down down this little path um, towards this. It, it looks like it's headed down, um, and that's that path is sloped somewhat down in this direction, uh, down a hill towards maybe a little vale or so, um, and. As that happens, um, another wolf trots out from up this path 
He should go towards me. I have like so many food, so much food on me. <laughs> well, in any event, it has trotted out this path and it is um, bearing its teeth. Yeah. Okay. And that ends my turn. And so that brings us back to Rosar. Uh, Rosar is going to move up near, um, uh, make, a, make a short move because I can only make a short move. And um, okay. I'm going to go up to, um, what, what's his name, Gordon? Is that him? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, can I see these these wolves th uh, through the trees? Hold yes. Up, at okay. Um, the large one that is that is dragging him. Um, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to cast. Uh, Rosar is gonna summon his will and uh, and and try to try to summon a fire bolt and just kind of like throw that. Like I understand it's going through the trees and everything, but. I'm gonna try to do it anyway because I want to. I want to try to get that guy off of him. Oh, so, so your your anyway. firebolt streaks through like it's on a rope. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> and and you you easily hit this uh this hulking wolf creature. Sweet. I, I assume you were aiming at the big one, correct? I was aiming at the big one. That's yeah. I want to stop him from. Uh, um, that's uh five damage. Oh, very good. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Release yeah. him, you, you vile beast. And, and I'm gonna tell you, it did not like that. It uh, it definitely oh. held out in pain. It its flesh is singed uh, oh. in a spot where your missile struck home, or your bolt your bolt struck home. But um, it it has not yet been deterred in its mission. Shit. <laughs> Whatever. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Galt, you're up. Uh, is there any way for uh, for Galt to be able to move up and get a line of sight with his crossbow on the big wolf, even through the trees? Uh, yes, so it's a part. You, you, yep, you you potentially have a line of sight about there if that works for you. It does. Uh, the rapid fire tag. How are we handling that for the crossbow? <clears throat> Which Fifteen or higher, you get to make yeah. a new. Fifteen attack. or higher, you get to make another another attack. Cool. Okay. Do, do a maximum of two, or just keep going. Man, uh, ma maximum of two, okay. since it's a crossbow. That's uh, only a mod uh, mod five. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> you shoot wow. well. so I, I shoot the tree <laughs> yes so like next so, to my head <laughs> right so Edmund is surprised when his oh, crossbow bolt comes out of nowhere <laughs> in the tree very close to him <laughs> why are you doing this why <laughs> because the damn tree was in my way <laughs> it's not my fault the cover just grew up out of nowhere. Right. <laughs> All right. Edmund. Wait, you're up. So from what I've seen, the fireball struck the wolf. Is Correct. it a normal wolf? So it is pitch black. It has the most piercing blue eyes you've ever seen. Okay. Its teeth look very sharp. It is gigantic by wolf standards, although it is clearly a wolf. Um, and its jaws are certainly covered in blood where it has gone to town on this guy. Okay. Somebody get Liam Neeson in here. It's the blue eyes, so, white wolf. <laughs> Knowing that I went to school, I guess, to study archaeology and all those, like, sciences, I'm, I'm probably, like, well-schooled with animals, I guess. So, yes. would a wolf be scared if I ran to where it would have flare? If it was a normal wolf, let's say. A, a normal wolf? Potentially, yes. I, I would, I would make you roll the check, and open see if you could, if just to see if you could intimidate it. So I'm gonna rush with my like with my flare, and I'm gonna be screaming like, ah, "Get out of here! Get out of here!" And like, Got it. So you're gonna give it. up your, your hidden status. Yeah, I'm you're gonna good. surprise it. <laughs> that moving. That, that was, should be like pretty surprising too. They'd be like, "Oh shit, a flare!" You know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a 13. Okay. So the uh, giant wolf creature is definitely taken aback. And in, <laughs> in fact, it, it lurches back in this direction, but it's still dragging oh, fuck. this man. And <laughs> oh, you are just no. beside yourself at the power of this animal, of this creature. So what I'm going to do and what my character would do, I have winged boots, so I can make a double move if I don't attack. So I'm gonna literally run away from it. Like I'm gonna realize how 
monstrous that thing is, and I'm gonna run down the path like screaming. Ah! Ah! <laughs> This way. Uh, yeah, yes. exactly. A party of brave adventurers. <laughs> When when danger when danger reared its ugly head, Sir Robin turned. He bravely fled. <laughs> All right. If you're why did my liege send me here? <laughs> if, if you're satisfied, Edmund, uh, I will turn it over to Gordon. Yeah. I um, I'm gonna go pick up my my cleaver. Very good, sir. Now, That's gold. Now it's gonna be around. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Round number two of. <laughs> are, you, are you a dwarf? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. It's a dwarf cook. It's fantastic. Or oh, chef. Man. I'm sorry, chef. I'm sorry, chef. Me cleaver needs some blood. And I'll throw it again. Nice. <laughs> so again, you're still... You've got this one tree to navigate, so it's still going to be hard. I imagine him kind of just like boomeranging it over top of the tree, just kind of arcing <laughs> it back to the wall. I... <laughs> I got this. Uh, I rolled a a sixteen. Nice. So, your your cleaver flies true, and it impacts right in the wolf's shoulder, um, buried almost up to the hilt, and the wolf lets out a, a ferocious scream of rage. So go ahead and roll your your Wait, damage. Six. Damn. So, it it is. Um, it is clearly not happy, and you can definitely see. Um, Redman could also see if he weren't fleeing the other way. Um, the the blood leaking out of this uh, out of this creature, mm. and I think, um, and it's definitely hurt. And I think that begins my term. And so, what happens is it continues a bit slower at this point, um, dragging this guy off. Uh, the edge of the map and so they head down into the glade into the gray abyss no this, this this wolf who catches Edmund's crazy scream and run through the trees followed by fleeing down the path just activated its prey drive there you go and it launches after you <laughs> oh uh, man and it, it's going to attempt to pounce and knock you down from behind so let's have this a little uh, strength roll off, shall we? Can I dex to avoid it? <laughs> <laughs> strength, all right. It's gonna yep. be a nineteen. <laughs> yeah, sure you, you don't have to worry because it 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 got a three. <laughs> <laughs> so the wolf just careens into your back and literally bounces off and kind of shakes its head and looks up like like what the hell just happened what just happened but There's also I, right, I would say Edmund it definitely got your attention and uh, that's the end of my turn and we're back with Rosar uh, Rosar is going to move as close as possible to the wolf um, that's chasing Edmund and um, like, it, it, like through the trees I guess yep. and um, overland route he is going to um He's gonna he's gonna do something kind of weird. Um, I want to try to um, he's gonna focus the his uh, his firebolt spell, but he's gonna focus it on Edmund's torch so that the firebolt originates from the from 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 the flare. Oh. So it kind of like it kind it kind of leaps from Edmund's hand to the to the wolf. Can I do that? Yeah, <laughs> that's epic. So oh, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna create it over with him as the point of origin. Correct. Yeah, I just kind of want he he just kind of like mutters some things. He looks like he's concentrated for a second, and then and then Edmund's Edmund would be like, "What the? F what the? F you know, like, <laughs> what is that? All right, that's, that's um, awesome. And your crystal is glowing extra red. Sweet. Um, that is a twelve. Yeah. So it, it forms right as you described in Edmund's hand and flies true. Um, I think it hit that wolf in the face. So go ahead and roll your damage. Yes. Holy shit! What's going uh, on? That's that's nine damage. Ooh, oh my shit. god! <laughs> Holy smokes! Yeah, magic efforts. Yeah. So th this wolf, I mean, he he clearly doesn't want a part of any of you, and he takes off through the trees, and is gone. 
And that brings us up to um, Galt. And I anticipate that you will want to head into the next area. I think so. Is it possible for me to do that whilst uh, playing a song inspiring my fellow fellow folks? Yes. Okay. Uh, so can I play the Sanctuary song? Yeah, go for it. Is that going to be a charisma roll to... Yes, to do yes, it? Sir. Right. yes, sir. Go get your guitar. Woo! I would, but it's still an organ. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It is a mod 22. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah. So, <laughs> what can we say about Galt and his musicianship? It, it knows no bounds. <laughs> and, uh, that, that loot is your best friend. That song leaps to life. And again, the song demands to know its target. Gordon Rambo is the healer, right? Yeah. Correct. Yep. Yeah, yep. healer. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> like, so he's like, oh, like, oh, sanctuary, you know, protect, you know. The music yes. in my ears. So, Gordon, you were surprised to see that you were glowing with a bright white light. Yeah. And uh, you now have 10 temporary hit points. Oh, for cry out loud. Cool. Why is everybody shining? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everyone's glowing in the forest. And, and okay. so, like, as he's playing the song, you know, and he's like, onward, my friends. To victory. <laughs> to save our friend that awesome. we have yet to make. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, um, Edmund. Yes, I'm going to go to the trail. Sorry. Very good. Yep. Very good. <laughs> My bad. And Gordon, are you also heading in that direction? Yeah, yeah I'm following him. Um, hmm. Do I see one of the wolves uh, Rosard killed? Uh, yes. I'm going to pick him up. So you now have wolf carcass uh, in, your, in, in your inventory. So is that a basic uh, work as damage or weapon damage? Because yes, I'm going to use the corpse being a wolf around. as as an ingredient. No, as a weapon. You're going to use the wolf's corpse as a weapon. Hey, I don't have a weapon. I have a. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, oh the yes. meat cleaver stuck in the wolf. Yes, it's still stuck in the big bad. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, uh, yeah. That's epic. I, I you know. <laughs> I understand ordinarily that uh, that a tool is a tool, but that's such an unwieldy tool. I, I think you're going to end up doing only basic work with that thing. Perfect. Perfect. But not not to mention the fact that we're, we're in a forest. Pick up a stick, you weirdo. <laughs> right. That the the bones are like broken and its body is jello. <laughs> Thanks for okay. so <laughs> What is I've... more intimidating to an animal or anything than to beat? it to death with its own falling <laughs> that's shit. the idea that's the idea behind that <laughs> all right and then and then rosar comes toddling behind <laughs> okay. toddling. i'm sorry uh he he comes slowly behind <laughs> Tort tortoning behind yes 